Hello, good morning to everyone and uh, congratulations for uh, becoming part of this LSM or Lay Servant Ministry. At dito po sa ating pong mga pag-aaral, it's actually a point or an opportunity in our lives to grow in our understanding, especially when it comes to those uh, lessons or those things that is related to us as being United Methodist Church. And of course, uh, when we are talking about advanced course in LSM, hindi pwedeng mawawala yung about sa doctrine natin bilang mga metodista. At napakaganda na makita na ang bawat uh, membrong metodista ay alam niya kung ano ang mga katuroang metodista. And that's why it's very important for us to learn about our faith, lalo na tayo na mga nagiging leader ng ating iglesia at sana ang bawat metodistang leader ay aral doon sa mga pananampalatayang kristyanong metodista. And with that, I want to invite everyone to focus ourselves, especially our mind in our teaching and let us uh, Ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit to be with us and uh, help us to understand those things that uh, that is part of us being a United Methodist. Let us pray. Okay. Oh Lord, uh, we come to you at this very moment and we want Lord God that uh, your Holy Spirit be with us and teach us, Lord God, as you open our mind in different ways of how to understand the United Methodist Doctrine or the Methodist Doctrine, O Lord. And we are praying that uh, your will and your teaching uh, will be revealed among us, Lord God. And we are praying that everything will be fine and we can adapt and we can put it into action as we uh, do our part as members of the church. We thank you, Lord God. We give you all praises and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, sa pagkakataong pong ito, uh, ako po ay magtuturo patungkol dito sa ating pong uh, United Methodist Doctrine or ang isang doktrina na kung saan dapat nating malaman bilang mga Methodista. And it's specifically Methodist uh, doctrine. Pupuntahan po natin at aaralin natin yung ilang mga bagay patungkol doon sa Wesleyan Quadrilateral Belief, which is very important, uh, especially in the theological task uh, for all of us na makita natin yung tamang kaparaanan, the dynamics of how we will do our theologizing as a United Methodist Church. Then we will also go to that doctrine of grace. If we will going to ask what is the doctrine of the United Methodist Church or of the Methodists, iisa lamang po ang doktrina natin, and that is the doctrine of grace. We will, uh, we will learn about that today. And hopefully, every one of us will have a focused mind when we are talking about these things. You can uh, have or you can uh, take your notes while we are learning about uh, our doctrines. But uh, nagbibigay rin po ako, magbibigay rin po ako ng handout sa inyo through our facilitators or through our leaders dito po sa Lay Servant Ministry. Tanongin nyo na lamang po kay uh, Kuya Marlon. Mga kapatid, bilang mga metodista, ano ba yung ating mga paniniwala? At tignan natin kung ano yung mga bagay na dapat nating makita at may sa buhay bilang mga metodista. Let us study about the Wesleyan quadrilateral beliefs. Ano ba yung nakapaloob dito? It is also known as the quadrilateral authority and it's credited to John Wesley in the 18th century. Uh, it outlines the four authorities that are claimed by people from even before John Wesley and up to his time. And there are four things that 
uh, very, that is very important. Oh, that's our very that is uh, that which is very important for us to know those four things. And ano ba yung uh, tulong nito para sa atin bilang mga metodista? Una ay scripture. Alam natin yan. Then yung tradition, yung uh, reason, and ang pinakahule yung ating pong experience. Kung titignan po natin, ang quadrilateral beliefs natin ay merong apat na tradisyon na kung saan uh, ang mga ito ay ating ginagamit when we are doing theolo uh, theology in our uh, congregations. Naririyan ang scripture which uh, credited among uh, evangelicals, tradition which is credited to Catholic tradition, then experience from charismatic tradition, and of course, reason, which is uh, coming from the liberal tradition. Kung titignan natin, and even our, uh, in our discipline, we can see how these four uh, beliefs or tung quadrilateral elements uh, works together, yung dynamics nito. Ang sabi ng ating uh, discipline, that the scripture is primary. Ito po ay napakahalaga. Ito po ay central sa ating uh, pagtiteologize uh, pag doon sa ating pong mga bagay-bagay na pinaniniwalaan sa ating buhay. Revealing the Word of God necessary for our salvation. Yan, napakahalaga niyan. That's why we as United Methodists are evangelicals and we put stress on the primacy of the Scripture. Then, pangalawa, ay yung tradisyon. Alam nyo, kay John Wesley, napakahalaga yung tradisyon ng church because those traditions conveys teachings that is being passed from that even from the time of Jesus Christ up to our time. Tradition includes ancient church tradition and the writings of the great theologians. Sino ba makakilala nyo ng mga theologians? And church fathers, as well as influences such as the beliefs, the values, and even instruction. So, mahalaga yung tradition na yan. And we indebted to the Catholics or among Catholics na kung saan yung tradisyon na meron ang katawan ni Kristo ay ating pinapahalagahan and it is always a resource for all of us to learn about our faith. Then, yung pong uh, pangatlo ay yung tinatawag na experience. Charismatic. Experience form the best evidence after scripture for the truthfulness of a particular theological view. And John Wesley believed that scriptural truths are to be primarily lived rather than simply taught or about merely believe all of those uh, included in the scripture. So, bawat isa sa atin, di ba, napakahalaga yung mga experience natin. Uh, merong pong bearing yan pagdating doon sa ating pong uh, pag-iisip, pagtiteologize, at kung ano man yung ating pong uh, pinaniniwalaan sa mga pagkakataong ito. And lastly, reasons. Ang reasons is very important. It is the means by which we may evaluate and even challenge the assumptions of tradition. We may trim our sails and adjust interpretations of the scripture based on reasoning. So, ang scripture nandyan lang yan. But sometimes, yung ating po mga interpretation nagbabago as time pass by habang tayo po ay nagkakaroon ng malalim na pag-aaral sa mga salita ng Panginoon and lalo na kapag ito po ay nilalagay natin sa konteksto ng ating pong uh, mga buhay. Kaya itong apat na ito ay napakahalaga lalo na kay John Wesley, when someone is doing uh, theology or teaching people about what we believe. 
Ang quadrilateral beliefs ay ganito ang itsura niya. Para sa akin, as I understand yung dynamics nitong mga bagay na ito, we put scripture doon sa pinakataas. Ano? Doon sa taas na ito, naroon yung primacy of the scripture. And of course, it is supported by these three things. Uh, the living core of Christian faith was revealed in scripture. Ano? Then, uh, naroon din yung illumined by our tradition. Then, vivified by personal experience and confirmed by reason. So, that's the dynamics of these four uh, elements when it comes to our theological task. Now, let's go to the doctrine of grace. Sabi nga natin kanina, uh, we don't have any or uh, doctrine but only one and that is the doctrine of grace. Ngayon, meron pong mga uh, bagay na nais kong dalin sa bawat isa sa atin. Alam nyo, mga kapatid, nung 1746, uh, si Wesley ay sinabi niya na yung main doctrines natin ay tatlo. That of repentance, pagsisisi, of faith, and of holiness. Kaya nga nasabi niya ni John Wesley that the grand depositum of the people called Methodist is holiness. Napakahalaga yan para kay John Wesley. Pero hindi, no, hindi doon nagtatapos sa holiness lamang, kundi meron pang ibang mga bagay na dapat tignan natin when it comes to our teaching and primarily dito po sa ating pong doctrine of grace. 18 years later, he insists that the three strands of scriptural doctrine essential for Christian unity are original sin, justification by faith, and holiness of heart and life. So itong uh, panahon na ito, after 1746, that is 18 years after, ay medyo nagbago yung mga, mga salita. And it is essential for Christian unity at ginamit niya yung original sin, justification by faith, then holiness of heart and life. Each of these core doctrines, the grace of God is a major emphasis. So napakahalaga yun para kay John Wesley. At ito ay pumapasok yung tatlong bagay na ating pong uh, pag-aaralan sa panahon na ito. Ito nga yung prevenient, justifying, and sanctifying grace. Mga kapatid, kung ating pag-uusapan ang grace, ano ba yung pumapasok sa isipan mo? Ang grasya ng Panginoon na para sa bawat isa sa atin, para sa akin, para sa iyo, at para sa lahat. Ang grace ay isang bagay na kung saan dapat nating makita yung uh, kabutihan ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. Ano? Subalit, uh, kapag pinag-usapan natin ng grace, merong pong mga bagay na kung saan ay gusto kong makita natin sapagkat ang doctrine of grace ay hindi lamang nag-iisa. Meron pong dalawang uh, contesting uh, view when it comes to that idea or to that teaching of grace. Dalawang tao na nagpasimula at nagturo tungkol doon sa grace. Una ay si Jacobus Arminius. Ano ba yung sinasabi ni uh, Arminius or Arminianism na teaching? Then, naririyan din si John Calvin who also uh, taught about doctrine of grace. So, both of them taught doctrine of grace. But the problem is they have different interpretation and different teaching when it comes to the word grace. Specifically, the grace coming from God and for them, the doctrine of grace is like this. Since they are uh, opposing one another, mga kapatid, ang nangyari para kay Arminian or Arminius, 
free will or human ability yung kanyang binibigyang pansin. Samantalang si uh, Calvin naman ay total inability or total depravity. So dito sa first part na ito, uh, they contradict one another. Ano? Para kay Jacobus Arminius, ang tao meron siyang do napakaliit, pero meron pa rin naroroon yung kakayanan na ibinigay ng Panginoon. Samantalang si Calvin, tinitignan niya na it's totally, there's no ability uh, doon sa tao. Ganon din yung total depravity. Uh, yung talagang tayo ay deprived of something good within us. Para kay Arminius, conditional yung election. <laughs> so the word conditional. But then, doon po kay Calvin, it is unconditional election. Ang tanong nga natin, nasaan ba tayo? Dalawa pa lamang yung pinapakita. Where is a uh, Methodist in these two contesting uh, stand when it comes to the doctrine of grace? Yung pangatlo, ano ba yan? The third is universal, pangkalahatan, or general atonement when we are talking about redemption. But for Calvin, it is limited. And it is particular. Kung sinong pinili ng Panginoon para kanyang iligtas, those people are entitled of election. Then, pangapat po mga kapatid ay yung the Holy Spirit can be effectually resisted doon sa side ni Arminius. But kay Calvin, irresistible ang grace, the efficacious call of the Spirit. When the Spirit works, when the Spirit do its job, ang, ang tao ay hindi makakatanggi doon sa mga bagay na dapat niyang gawin. Then, lastly, hopefully, makita na natin kung nasaan ang Methodista dito sa uh, Arminian and Calvinist point of view. Para kay Arminius, falling from grace. Ibig sabihin, maaari kang maalis pa rin doon sa uh, grasya ng Panginoon. Samantalang kay Calvin is perseverance of the saints. And that is when you are being saved by the Lord, you will be saved forever. Kung titignan natin, Ito po ay naglalabang kaisipan na una yung free will at pangalawa yung God's sovereignty. So it, dito sa dalawang ito na parehas na doctrine of grace, nasaan kaya ang metodista? Ano kaya yung uh, ating paniniwala tungkol dyan? Ikaw kapatid, ano yung paniniwala mo rito? Jacobus Arminius or we are following John Calvin's teaching. Magpatuloy po tayo sa ating pong uh, pag-aaral. When we are talking about grace, it is actually undeserved favor. Wala tayong kailangan gawin para ito ay uh, matanggap natin. <laughs> Mercy and free love of God. Yan ay ibinibigay ng Diyos sa bawat isa. The actual power or health or energy of God. And Wesley speaks of grace as a formative and creative. The term is used as an equivalent of the Holy Spirit. So para kay Wesley, when we are talking about grace, uh, we are also talking about the Spirit. The Spirit who always moves in our lives, doing things, coming from God so that every one of us will experience the grace of the Lord. It is continually breathing His presence into the soul of man. As soon as ever the grace of God, in the former sense, His pardoning labana, is manifested to our souls, the grace of God in the latter sense. So the power of His Spirit takes place therein and now we can perform through God what man was impossible. 
So that's something that Wesley is claiming of. That the Spirit, when it is working in our lives, though it is impossible, but by God's grace, nothing is impossible. Kung matatandaan natin from Philippians, no, na lahat kaya natin, all things is possible. And that is through the work of the Spirit or by grace of God. Ngayon, pag-usapan na natin yung tatlong bagay. Kanina, nabanggit natin yung prevenient grace, justifying grace, and yung sanctifying grace. And we have already defined what is grace. This is unmerited favor. It came uh, from God. It, it is initiated by God. And for John Wesley, it is uh, the Spirit who is continually working in our lives that makes everything possible that's why we are always saying, by the grace of God. Ngayon, puntahan natin yung prevenient grace. How can we understand, or uh, how uh, do we understand this word, prevenient? Kung titignan natin tong word na ito, mahalaga siguro nabigyan natin ng pansin yung salitang itong pre. Ano? Uh, pre Ibig sabihin ba nito, uh, di ba, yung before, ano, it's, yun yung kanyang kaagad-agad na mariremember mo when you are talking about that, uh, uh, that word. Then, what is prevenient grace? It is present from birth. It is preparing us for new life in Christ. So, even before, something happened in your life, that grace is already present. Yan ay naririyan na sa iyong buhay. Prevenient means comes before. And yung sabi natin kanina, pre, ano? It comes before. And mula kay John Wesley on his sermon on working out your own salvation, kung babasahin po natin ito, ito po ang sinasabi niya, ano? Salvation begins with what is usually termed and very properly preventing or preventing grace, including the first wish to please God, the first dawn of light concerning His will, and the first slight transient conviction of having sinned against Him. All this implies some tendency toward life, some degree of salvation, the beginning of deliverance from a blind, and feeling heart, quiet, insensible of God and the things of God. With all of these things being said, ano ang pagkakaunawa natin dito sa prevenient grace? One thing na mapupulot natin mula sa salita ng Panginoon, na yung tayo'y inibig na ng Diyos kahit nung tayo'y makasalanan pa. That uh, even uh, do, before ng actual salvation na maranatan, maranasan natin sa ating buhay, ang, ang grasya ng Panginoon ay kumikilos na sa ating buhay. And it helps us no? Yung grace na ito, it helps us to make at least the light dawn in our lives. Magkaroon tayo ng desire to follow what God is initiating in our lives. Yung para bang ikaw ay kanyang kinakalabit. At mula doon sa pangangalabit na yon, then yung consciousness mo ay mapapatutok doon sa bagay na naisabihin ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Prevenient grace is for John Wesley, it is the conscience. It's not something natural in the consul, uh, constitution of every person. It is a gift of God's prevenient grace when it is heeded and welcomed in the soul. Sino po sa inyo ang merong konsensya dito? Siguro gumamit ka ng safeguard. 
Siguro naalala nyo pa yung uh, patalastas na yon, no? Yung konsensya. At para kay John Wesley, ang konsensya ay biyaya ng Panginoon and it is the Holy Spirit working in you. Para nga sa kanya eh, it's not natural that we have that uh, conscience. But it is God working in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is part of God's prevenient grace in our lives. It both prevents a person from sinning. Diba kapag gagawa ka ng kasalanan, parang, teka lang, nakukonsensya ako. Parang ayaw kong gawin, parang mali itong aking ginagawa. Ano? O itong aking gagawin. And it prevents or goes before the reception of more grace. So, yan ay dinadala ka doon sa lalong pagkaranas ng mas marami pang grasya ng ating Panginoon. Ang tanong natin, did you experience this prevenient grace? Ano kaya yung mga bagay na nag-serve as one way of God waking you up, uh, waking you up from being asleep? Mula doon sa mga kasalanan na ginagawa natin sa buhay. Ano kaya yung uh, naging daan upang mag-isip ka at nais mo nang uh, yakapin ang pagliligtas ng Diyos? And mind you, that might be God's working and that is God's prevenient grace in your life. At napakasaya kung ang mga bagay na ito ay ating binibigyan ng attention. No man living is entirely destitute of what is vulgarly called natural conscience. But this is not natural. It is more properly termed preventing grace or prevenient grace. So sana mula rito ay naunawaan natin ano ba ibig sabihin nitong prevenient grace na ito. And hopefully, every one of us can determine yung point in your life that you can see that God worked in your life and it ended you to follow the footsteps of the Lord and embrace the grace of God and will lead you doon sa susunod na bagay na mahalaga sa ating buhay. And that is justifying grace through faith. What is justifying grace? While prevenient grace is something that is present before you experience the actual justification, Now, what is justification? What is justifying grace through faith, which is the second uh, part of our doctrine? Ang justifying grace ay something to do with our salvation. To Wesley, salvation consists of two grand branches. Tandaan niyo po ito, ha? Salvation for John Wesley is composed of two grand branches. And that is, number one, yung tinatawag natin na justification. At yung pangalawa ay yung tinatawag nating sanctification. Itong dalawang ito is part of God's plan of saving us. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung una, yung justification. Justification, we are saved from the guilt of sin. Try to underline that word, guilt. Tayo po'y nililigtas mula doon sa guilt of sin and restored to the favor of God. So, yan yung ginagawa ng justification sa ating buhay. Ah, diba, meron tayong mga tinatawag na yung... Uh, ano bang tawag doon sa hukuman? Ano? Kapag nandyan na, babasahin na yung uh, 
uh, decision sa iyo. Iba sinasabi whether you are guilty or not guilty. Dito po sa, sa part ni John Wesley, as if it is a forensic justification that the judge is telling us or telling you that you are not guilty. You are justified. At ikaw ay instantly, you are saved from guilt. Kahit ikaw ay may kasalanan na nagawa nung mga nakaraan, but because of the merit of Jesus' deed upon the cross, we are claimed as justified. And we are not guilty. So sa justification, bigyan diin natin na tayo'y nililigtas niya doon sa guilt of sin. Whereas, yung sanctification naman, we are saved from the power and root of sin. And we are restored to the image of God. So yung una, bigyan pa natin ng pansin, justification, we are restored doon sa favor of God. While in sanctification, we are restored to the image of God. So, ibig sabihin, when the process, the entire process of sanctification happened, we are becoming like the first Adam, the Adam before the fall. Bumabalik tayo doon sa pagkakalikha sa atin. Diba? Ang sabi, ang pagkakalikha niya sa atin ay we are created in the image of God. In that original righteousness, in that time when we were, or humanity was created in the image of God. And by sanctification, we are restored to that image. So, we continue to, to talk about it um, after uh, justification by grace. Uh, ang justification by grace is God's saving grace is both justifying and sanctifying. It came from the grace, the very grace of the Lord. God loves us. And out of His love, out of God's love, He sent His only begotten Son. It's not by your merit of what you have done in your life, but with what God intend us to have, regardless of your background in life. Sabi rito, God's grace is both free in all. Ngayon siguro kung babalikan natin yung kanina, yung Arminius at saka Calvin debate, nakikita nyo na kaya kung nasaan tayo. Ano? Either ikaw ba ay nandun sa Arminian or naroon ka sa, sa Calvinist. Ang Methodista, nasa saan ba? For justifying grace, God's grace is both free in all and free for all. Kung babalikan natin, yung debate na ito ni Arminius and Calvin, may kita natin na yung isa doon, it is general atonement. While the other one is part, uh, particular lamang. It is only for those chosen by God to receive this kind of grace. But John Wesley, on his sermon on free grace, he said that it is both free in all and free for all. By free in all, it does not depend on any power or merit in man. No, not in any degree, neither in whole nor in part. All good tempers, good desire, and good intention or intentions of a person flow from the free grace of God. They are the streams only, not the fountain. God's grace is also free for all. Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. To say then, He did not intend to save all sinners is to represent Him as a gross deceiver of the people. So John Wesley stands on that ground that uh, Jesus died for everyone. It's not just a partic uh, of a particular race. He did not die only for the Israelites. 
or not even the Gentiles, but He died for everyone. Simple as that. God's grace does not act irresistibly. Kanina, meron tayong nakita doon sa Calvin and Arminius na parang irresistible grace. Pero meron naman nagsasabi na it is uh, uh, ang tao ay pwede niyang tanggihan. Ano? He can resist. Pero dito, sabi ni John Wesley that God's grace does not act irresistibly. We may comply therewith or may not. For His own sovereign purpose, God does work irresistibly in some persons. But even in them, He does not always so work. And for justification, faith alone is the condition. You can do something through Christ who is strengthening you. Stir up the spark of grace which is now in you. And He will give you more grace. You must be workers together with Him. Otherwise, He will cease working. So, kung titignan natin ito mga kapatid, ha? lalo na yung huling bahagi, you must be workers together with Him. God initiated, isa sa paborito kong kanta, yung He who began a good work in you. God began a good work in your life. That means God initiated something in your life. And God wanted you to co-op with Him. We must work with God. Otherwise, He will cease working. And you know, when God initiated something in your life and you cooperate with Him, then God is faithful to complete it in you. So, ang, ang trabaho ng Panginoon ay hindi nagtatapos nung pinasimulan niya, kundi siya ay tumutulong kasama natin upang mangyari yung kanyang banal na kalaoban sa ating buhay. And that's why we claim that in our lives, when we start to do or to accept the grace of God, then God continuously working in us. Sabi nga natin, we are continuously uh, being, uh, although papunta na tayo dun sa pangatlo, God is uh, continuously uh, making us a better person. And we are uh, brought from one glory to another glory and to another glory. So, yun yung grasya ng Panginoon. But God wanted you to cooperate with Him. And that's why you need to work also with God. Pero, binanggit niya rito, anong kailangan mong gawin? In God's initiation, you must have faith in God. That's the only condition. Meron part doon, uh, ang, ang salvation ba is conditional? O kaya naman, unconditional? But for John Wesley, it is conditional and only in the condition of faith. Yung pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. Pakinggan natin ito, The Theology of John Wesley from W.R. Cannon. Ano? Uh, Wesley holds synergism. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng synergism? Yung dalawang uh, power, sila ay nagtutulong-tulong. Ano? Syn synergy. God who initiated and we as people cooperate with God and this continuously working until such time that God's work in your life is complete and we are restored in the very image of God. Sabi ni John Wesley, for in the very act of not killing grace and of listening to the voice of the natural conscience, man is actually cooperating with God in God's effort in behalf of his salvation. This must be the case. It cannot be otherwise. Faith is offered as God's free gift. 
but the sinner must then actively respond to that offer and reach out with the arms of true repentance to receive the gift. So sana makita na natin dito ano? na we need also to do our part. But not that big. The only condition and the only thing that God expects to you, to you or from you is you put your faith in the Lord. Then we go to the last part which is sanctifying grace through faith. As justification, save us from the guilt of sin, sanctification will restore us in the image of God and we are saved from the root and power of sin. For Wesley, experience as well as scripture shows this salvation to be both instantaneous and gradual. At justification, a sinner is sanctified is instantaneously. So you are saved instantly. Once you put your faith in the Lord, you repent on your sins, and God instantly forgive you. And you are now saved from guilt of sin and restored in the favor of God. But in sanctification, though justification is instant, but sanctification is gradual. Sa panahon ng justification, we are instantly, and then susunod na kaagad yung sanctification. And it is a gradual work by the grace of God that we are becoming a better follower of Christ or a better person. Yun yung bagay na kung saan ay ini-encourage yung bawat isa sa atin to grow in our uh, character as people of God. We go on from grace to grace while we are careful to abstain from all appearance of evil and are zealous of good works. It is thus that we wait for entire sanctification no, uh, for a full salvation from all our sins. So, kailangan mga kapatid na tayo'y nag-improve, tayo'y bumubuti, pa, paganda ng paganda, di ba? At palakas ng palakas, patatag ng patatag ang ating pananampalataya, we are growing in grace, we are growing in our lives as Christians, as followers of Christ. And sanctification is accomplished, accomplished by faith alone. And we co-op with the Lord as the Spirit is working in us. We as people uh, entrust, entrusting ourselves to God, then the work of the Spirit is continuously working in us until we reach at that point that the entire sanctification happened in our lives. Exactly as we are justified by faith, so are we sanctified by faith? Faith is the condition and the only condition of sanctification, exactly as it is of justification. However, Wesley declares, repentance and zeal of good works are so necessary that if a man willingly neglect them, he cannot reasonably expect that he shall ever be sanctified. So, kung titignan natin dito, napakahalaga na makita yung pagbabago doon sa tao. At mahalagang binigyan niya ng pansin na yung repentance at saka yung good works dapat na obserbahan sa buhay natin. Yeah, when we are in justified by God, mga kapatid, tayo ay nakakagawa pa rin ng mga pagkakasala. But God is calling us towards repentance. Pag nagkasala ka ngayon, God is calling you to repent. At kapag ikaw ay nagkasala at nagrepent sa Panginoon, patatawarin ka ng Panginoong Diyos. At ang maganda, dapat nakikita rin yung magagandang gawa sa buhay mo. Katulad nga ng sinasabi ni James, faith without action is dead. 
That's why part of the condition in us as uh, faith is uh, something that we can uh, give to the Lord, yung, yun yung ating part, eh dapat nakikita yung good works na siyang nagpapakitang tunay na buhay yung pananampalataya natin. The word here is necessary. That if a man willingly neglect them, then he cannot reasonably expect that he shall ever be sanctified. He cannot grow in grace in the image of God. Nay, he cannot retain the grace he has received. He cannot continue in faith or in the favor of God. It is in the, his work or John Wesley's work. Uh, may kita na po natin yan, yung kanyang uh, katuroan. The heart of Wesley's theology of sanctifying grace is his doctrine of Christian perfection, which he described as the grand depositum which God has lodged uh, with the people called Methodists. Christian perfection is the loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. At ito po'y hindi in-exclude yung any human infirmities and even ignorance and mistake. Ibig sabihin, pwede pa rin po tayong magkamali. Pwede pa rin po tayong matawag na ignorante sa harap ng Panginoon. But Christian perfection has something to do with our desire to please God and love Him with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And I believe this to be a natural consequence of the soul's dwelling in flesh and blood. Yung mga human infirmities na yan, yung mga ignorance na yan, and even mistakes. Part yan ng ating uh, naririto pa tayo sa ating pong lupang katawan. But God wanted us to grow in our love with the Lord. He also uses perfect love when He is talking about perfection. Second blessing or second change, full salvation and entire sanctification. So when we are talking about Christian perfection, we are also talking about entire sanctification. It is the process of sanctification that is uh, restoring the very image of God in us. And it has a lot of uh, things happening in us. Yung pong tinatawag natin na repentance, sinning, uh, committing mistakes, but you repent again, then you give extra work, good, uh, perfect, uh, good works in our lives. Yan ay tuloy-tuloy hanggang ito'y lumaki ng lumaki sa ating buhay. And part of that, uh, that we do all these things because we truly love our Lord God. Wesley insisted on the possibility and desirability of becoming perfected in love. Palagay ko marami sa atin, mga kapatid, ang nais natin na mahalin ang Diyos ng buong puso, ng buong kaluluwa, ng buong isipan, at ng buong kalakasan. And that is part of the reality that we can desire. Perfect love is the conscious certainty in a present moment of the fullness of one's love for God and neighbor. One may lapse from perfection as tragically as one falls from grace at any other stage of life. Ito na po yung huling part na kung saan sinasabi niya na pwede kang mag-fall ulit. Siya, si John Wesley, hindi siya naniniwala doon sa tinatawag na perseverance of the saints. Because of free will in us, dumarating sa buhay minsan ng tao, na umaalis siya doon sa kanyang pananampalataya at paglilingkod sa Diyos at siya ay nawawala sa grasya ng ating Panginoon. But of course, we also believe that the prevenient grace of the Lord is still working in the life of the person hanggang makabalik siya muli sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Perfection means perfecting. So there's no absolute state of being a perfect person, but then it is a uh, it is something that is improving in our lives. Kaya nga sabi natin, it is not an absolute state. Habang tayo ibuhay, patuloy tayong 
uh, pinapaging bago, binabanal ng ating Panginoon hanggang mangyari sa atin yung entire sanctification, especially when we uh, stand before the Lord and God will tell us, you, my faithful, good servant. Sa kahuli mga kapatid, as we conclude, I want you to look at our, at our conclusion and it says, to use the grace given is a certain way to obtain more grace. From prevenient grace up to the sanctifying grace. Habang patuloy po nating kinagamit ang grasya na yan, tayo po ay muli uh, patuloy na makakatanggap ng mas marami pang grasya mula sa ating pong Panginoon. In this Wesleyan formulation, God works. Therefore, you can work and must work. God is enabling us, mga kapatid. The initiative of God's grace is completely retained. Man has no cause to claim merit or pride for his righteousness. This formula also makes very positive evaluation of the Christian life in terms of man's moral endeavor. In establishing his middle position, Wesley escapes the tendencies toward the antinomianism in some phases of reformation and the antithetic possibility of justification by works implicit in Roman Catholic dogma established by the Council of Trent. Can we not say the Wesleyan position supersedes the synergistic controversies of the past in the recognition that both God and man work under the ultimate ages of God's redemptive purpose and will. Ang ating Panginoong Diyos ay patuloy po na kumikilos at siya ay patuloy na nagbibigay ng grasya sa bawat isa sa atin. And God is wanting us to always cooperate with God. Mga kapatid, salamat sa inyo pong pakikinig and this ends my presentation on the doctrine of our Methodist uh, heritage. Magandang umaga at sa Diyos ang lahat ng papuri. Amen.